So right here we have another thriller. Uh, Tarek against Cruel Tech. Tarek with another um, Amaric. <laughs> I forget this guy's name. I think I've never really played an, uh, an Amaric. I, I played one Amaric based deck, and it was horrible. Um, but yeah, Amaric. He got a win with that, and Cruel Tech managed to get his rush bullshit out. And again, Tarek. Tar Tar Banned the freaking obnoxious wisdom uh, control bullshit. And he play he plays. You know, I've watched the Ivia Cup. Awesome, awesome tournament held, by the way, by the Shrining. I watched like both grand finals, and I've seen that thing. The Descendant of Divinity is a thing that people really like, and also Drayla, which is pretty awesome because I'm a big fan of Drayla as well. It's a pretty underrated card. And it's cool to see that being played. And he gains control of that, uses Devious Plot to get rid of the Flash Sculpture. Nice play. And he gets the zomb And he gets the zombie. Tauric? Good shit. And he also uses this. Sell into slavery. Double block with... 10 to 17 HP. I thought he was getting, uh, getting bopped here by Cruel Attack, but apparently not. He is still going ham. He is still going strong with this. Oh, it wasn't the double, double, double block, by the way. It was just the uh, zombie legionnaire that he ran into the other one. I just realized that. But still, still. Good shit. Word of Pain for the Weakness Emblems and for Card Draw for Cruel Tech right there. Because, you know, as I've said, everything that goes out of the boundaries of meta is pretty cool. And I've actually thought, you know, Torric, of course, you see Alexa, you assume, because that's what everyone plays. With basic Alexa, it's soldiers, because it's in a meta again. But it's not soldiers, it's something completely different, and I really like that. Yo, Drayla, it's cool. It's cool shit. Okay, set onto slavery for extra card draw. Hmm. If it isn't online already, you're gonna see another chalice based deck that I play played by the way. I'm really into the into that um sell into slavery thing. So it goes in for beats with the descendant. That is some that that is That is that is that is a temptress of the sea. That that is I like this deck. Because Temptress is a really good card, and especially against zombies who are generally just ve very slow, they could usually can't deal with it. Other, of course, then you have this freaking obnoxious fumes, then yeah, then you can. <laughs> and also a freaking spoiled aristocrat, which you can't block succubus for cruel tech. He didn't. Oh, he didn't. Ah, he doesn't have any mana. I was about to say, because I was, like, wondering why he didn't put, like, any weakness emblems on any of the creatures that come out, but obviously he doesn't have any mana in order to do so. And also, you know, the thing for Flesh Sculpture, you know, when you get that going, you can't put another front line because it's a 2-2, so it gets removed by every creature, but for Drayla, it's a 4-3, which is pretty damn ridiculous for also what she does with her effect. So you can also put her on the front line and it doesn't matter because she can deal with most creatures anyways and that's that's also what I like about this creature overall. But yeah, now Succubus has hit the field so you can't really attack with Drayla if you want to keep her on the board, which you probably want, so you should put her on the back line probably. <clears throat> and with everything he attacks, Succubus can't really deal with it because he has to block. Oh, okay, bust up Drayla to a 3 speed. Maybe you should wait and not play too much. 2-4. Spoiled Aristocrat. Goes in for beats, I'll say. I could see that. Okay, keeps three blockers alive. For everything that he has on the, on the field, basically. And he doesn't block, takes the five beats. Cruel tech. Soul projection onto... Oh god, that's 8 damage. 2, 4, 5. That's enough. That clears the board. Tauric. Hashtag Tauric. Damn. Cool play. Let's see. It's uh, 6 mana. 3 aspects. Don't really need more for, uh, for uh, Corruption. Sanctum. And 2 cards in hand. So we're going to see how Cruel Tech is going to respond to that to what just happened there. <clears throat> I 
He also has one mana left, so if he plays a creature, he can actually use Drayla's ability to put a weakness emblem on it. Of course, Sex, the cavalry field captain. But he's in a good position. He didn't want yet, not at all. And uses Consume Spirit. Buffs him up to a 5. Can't attack yet, though. Puts him on the back burner. Deals with Drayla, however, so that's a good good thing for Cruel Tech. Oh, sorry. Okay, extra card draw. With uh, the Sell into sl Slavery. And gets another Spoiled Aristocrat out. And he makes, makes him go online with Brenna. Okay. He gets three beats in. Keeps everything else on the field in order... If he has like any other removal shenanigans and can just swing in for seven beats, which is probably not likely <laughs> to happen. But with Cruel Tech, you never know. He might run Infernal Tribute, but I can't see him doing that. And that's a Plague Vermin Senpai Dono Supreme Leader deals with um, the Spoiled Aristocrat, and that's a problem. That guy is foiled, by the way, and it's definitely a problem. The undead, ne undead Necromancer, the unfatherly Necromancer, some tend to say. No one says that besides me. <laughs> So he somehow needs to get rid blah, blah, needs to get rid there you go of that. Maybe just run Shadow Step Assassin into it. He doesn't have any any uh, cards in hand, so there's nothing no instant spells to fear for um Tauric. <clears throat> but I, I, I gotta say, you know, when when you see my ch next chalice base deck, you see why these two hero powers are pretty awesome together, because you just spend one mana basically. This one costs zero mana and it's uh, online every turn. So you just get free card draws <laughs> every every second turn, which is pretty cool. Or every turn when you have something to sack other than the uh, other than the militias. And that was by the way a devious plot to get rid of it and then some beats and one problem less for Toric. Uh did he miss his DO? Cruel tech? I think that's what just happened. Looked like it. <clears throat> Extra counter on. Drayla with six mana. Mm. So everything that comes on the board is not gonna be good for good old cruel tech. Sadly, it doesn't trigger for zombies for the Tombs of the Damned Zombies, which is kind of a shame. And goes for the double damage, sort of. Or is he unstoppable? Hmm. Can it take an additional target, but... Oh, well. Oh, he, you can use it on the zombies that get, come from this. Ooh. Yeah, well, Drayla is even more awesome now. <laughs> so Shadow Step Assassin needs to be sacked. That guy is shrinked, obviously. Ah, okay, yeah. Gets rid of it right away. With hero power... And the deadly. Oh no, wait, you can he can actually trade with Prina. Which he does. I was about to say, maybe she is more valuable though. Apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently Drayla is more powerful. I mean he has 10 mana and he doesn't really have that many cards in hands anyways. Every second turn he can use Sell into Slavery on a peasant, so. Yeah. Every everything that comes on the board is just like gets a weakness emblem from Drayla at this uh, state of the game. Helm of the Minion. If you can't remove it, just <laughs> use it yourself, I guess. And a freaking Triangelica Sentinel. That guy just has everything. Gets with a weakness emblem on the Descendant. Goes in for the double beats. You could actually also attack with Drayla, but... Oh well. I would say sell into slavery for the, for the the guy right here. I mean, he has he is deadly, the necromancer, but still, it doesn't do much for him next turn. And goes again for word of pain, extra card draw might net him a card that he needs. Uh, like for instance, the uh, Lord Harsford would be a thing, the Duke Harsford. Could be a card that uh, 
gives them a little bit of more leeway for now. But apparently he missed the DO in la last turn, so there is also that little problem. And he resigned and Torik wins. Good thing, good thing. Okay, the next round is going to resume and, I'm, uh, and I have to go to the toilet, so I'm not going to cast another one. Uh, thanks for watching. That was bonus game number four or five that I casted so far from this, from this midweek conquest tournament. <clears throat> so, Rinriet against Torik in round number four. Um, oh yeah, that was an interesting um, soldier... Order Dominion deck uh, from Tauric. Um, by the way, the interesting thing is that Rinri had actually banned Amalric, which is kind of weird. Because looking at the decks that he plays, I probably would have like uh, banned Advanced Zash. And I just chatted with him a little bit. Cool guy, Rinri. Definitely, definitely. I mean, he freaking made the Banshee Bounce deck, so of course he's awesome. But uh, yeah, he said he didn't like Advanced Zash, so I'm kind of. Kind of confuzzled why he didn't ban that. He, however, won the first match. His um, Naiva deck, whatever it is, um, didn't get banned this time. It's Enoch again, and he won. Was it the... We just played against it, I know. I think it was the, the Order one with the... Was it him? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> he didn't play it against me. Path, to, of, path 2 of 4 into Transcendence. Path 2 of 4 or intro, into something like that. But yeah, he plays um, his Shaman's List, and we're gonna see. By the way, he told me that in the Vampire, <laughs> that's the second time someone said it against me when I played Vampires, maybe it's his hidden passive of the deck, that he missed two DOs. Yeah, that's the second time someone said that, so maybe that's a hidden passive or some shit. So, um, we're gonna see if, it, uh, if it's gonna be play out better for him this time, the good old Shaman's. He only needs to win one more time. One more time. And I don't know what Torek played in the first game. If he played um, the Zash deck or if he played the Alexa deck. If he played the Alexa deck, he already should know what he has to expect from his decks. Color one red. Gets rid of the Shadow Step Assassin. And there's the Temptress. And Deadly is Deadly... <laughs> deadly is Deadly, that's true. Deadly is definitely detrimental to, um, or for Shamans. Not, however, if you can just Fire Blast all your problems away, which he did. He has the Sanctum. Sanctum? The <laughs> Summon Totem. Mountain Sanctuary. So we can search his car, uh, his deck for uh, at least the top four, top five cards for um, totems, and he don't ha doesn't have anything in hand. A non-creature card, so he can only get the mausoleum out. I think now, oh, he can't. Okay, apparently shrines don't count for that ability or for that effect. Hmm. Yeah, Drayla is a problem, definitely, against, um, I almost said vampires, I'm just completely out of it. Against uh, shamans, especially against the uh, Offering Yard Priest, when he gets buff and you can just shrink him down at least a little bit, uh, to the point that it's not as, ob as obnoxious as it usually would be. Make him less bigger than he would be. But we'll see. It needs... You need some time to get shamans going. That's just how shamans work. And uh, he just has to has to hope that he is a little bit more lucky with Mountain Sanctuary, which he is. Gets ah, sorry, almost dying. <laughs> Gets a lightning totem out, mm, and he has the totem of swiftness out. So. Yeah, any shaman would would do. Would be no, would have no problem to deal with uh, with dealing with uh, Drayla. Not even even the death curse shaman. Even though you know swift lightning beats. Lightning totem is two damage. It is so yeah, she's down to two. So she, so you still need to use 
Lightning Totem, Totem of Swiftness, and um, and a Death Curse Shaman in order to kill Drelas. And it's a little bit of overkill and a little bit of a waste, I would say. Even though, of course, Drela is a good card. And now there is Descendant. That guy deals 8 damage when you Soul Projection him, by the way. <laughs> Which is pretty insane. Definitely. 8 damage? That's something. However, he still has Spark. So we're gonna see if he makes use of that or not. Could be interesting to see. I, I don't think he has Totem of Rocknock, or however it's called, uh, in his deck. You know, the one that you can basically turn into a creature. I don't think he has that in his deck, even though the deck is kind of good. But that's the only deck that is not two aspects. It's actually three. So, makes sense not to put it in and then just go for one more Totem of Legends, Totem of Lightning, and one more Totem of Swiftness, and Totem of Tortures. So yeah, he's in it. <clears throat> Let's see what he's gonna do. Mausoleum. Okay. Death Curse Shaman, I guess. From Descendant. Offering Yard Priest, okay. That's a 3-3? Three, three? Okay. Oh yeah, it's also minus one speed to the Descendant, I totally forgot. I thought he would wanted to get rid of Drayla, but now he can definitely get rid of the... Or like that. <laughs> okay, that was a good play. So totally wiped the board there. Because I thought he was wanted to go for Drayla, but it wouldn't have killed her, but... That, def that certainly did. Sadly, he didn't have one more totem out, other than... Otherwise, he would have survived the Drayla there. Because he would have been a 4 4, and Drayla only deals 3 damage. <clears throat> but Math wasn't on his side, sadly, this time. But still, great play. Didn't, didn't expect Mausoleum in a Shaman's list as well. So, cool to see. Definitely some, di some diversity. And. He stands for that and I stay for that, because I easily also could have gone for Rage Rush, but instead of Rage Rush, I just go for Red Soldiers. Because it's just, you know, two, two mana fireballs is just something that you can't pass on if you have to... Uh, if the game gives you the... gives you the chance. But it's on to Tauric. Next. And that's Temptress. But I don't think he has any spells in hand. So it shouldn't be too bad, even though... Is it only spells? A non-shrine card with level 2 or less. Okay, so that also could be creatures. So we can also get rid of... Um, can get rid of any shaman, I think, and get rid of any totem. Unless he has totem of Rocknock, but I don't think he has. Is it even called like that? I'm not sure. I think it is. <clears throat> Sounds like a bad snack. <laughs> so... Okay, that deals with it. No problem. Get swiftness. Question is, does he? He has um, cathedral, sell into slavery, so he probably is gonna use uh, his militias for that. Is he gonna use the lightning totem? If not, he's probably gonna run the yeah. He's gonna run the tribe mystic into him and then goes for three beats. Makes sense. It's actually a good shaman, I gotta say. It doesn't do anything, but. That's the most speed that any shaman has. Aside from the Ancestor's Guide, obviously. But yeah, 3 damage and 3 speed. That's good. Also manages to wipe the board again. And that's a Spoiled Aristocrat, if I've ever seen one. Still deals with, with it. And a 3 speed Shadow Step Assassin, so that's quite a board. However, he has um, a hero ability. Which you could use. Totem of Legends, also, so that was German, sorry. So <laughs> hits the sanctuary for extra card draw. 
I think uh, with a firebolt. Uh, well, it's a three speed deadly, so. Depends on what he has planned now. Mm, but I think whatever he does, yeah, it just wipes his entire field. So. Also, couldn't. Could have gotten rid of. The Bloodsick Mutant instead with the fireball. Yeah, everything, every, the whole board dies if he if he attacks, basically. <laughs> but he has to run, of course, the three speed into the Bloodsick Mutant, otherwise he wouldn't die. And we he don't want that to happen. And just one damage is enough to. Okay, never mind. He has another fireball. Didn't see that one coming. That, however, deals with the spell at the risk of getting three more beats for Rinriot. And he's heading closer to the overall win of this best of three. Against fellow German Tarek. That's a board presence. Apparently he doesn't have the sell into slavery. He has zero cards in hand, so yeah, he can't uh, use, use that for extra card draw at the moment. And that's two lightning totems. Apparently, though, he doesn't have another shaman in hand, which... Is a little bit of a problem because he, huh? Apparently he does. Circle of Fire into Ancestor's Guide into a Mausoleum into Lightning Totem twice into Totem of Legends. Wipes the board and he can go in for six beats overall. That was a nice play. And once again, Mausoleum of the Damned does the job. And now he only has one card in hand, so it is gonna be pretty hard for Torric to come back. Because now we have entered mid-game and he sta and uh, Rinri had stabilized. He doesn't have massive removal, so um, yeah, that's a problem for Torric. However, that guy is gonna get removed. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Totem of Legends triggered as well, and that six beats are coming in coming in your way, and I think that might be game because Oh wait, he has two Dominion levels. He might have Oh no, he has one card in hand, never mind. I was about to say he has probably Cataclysm in the deck. And I think he missed DO. No, he didn't, never mind. Worst thing to have when you have one card and you hit the DO is getting another shrine. Yeah, okay. Apparently he hit another shrine or something. Tariq resigned, and that's the win for Rinriet overall.